Hi, I'm Bob Lacey with Henke Manufacturing in Leavenworth, Kansas. We're going to highlight uh, some of the points that uh, operators and uh, maintenance personnel will need to be familiar with. Now with the wing uh, fully stowed against the machine, uh, the float link is holding all the weight of the wing. It's up against this stop. Now as you deploy the wing, let the wing down, the rod's going to extend and uh, let the wing come down the ground. Now, you get a lot of flow out of these wheel loaders, 20, 30 gallons a minute. For proper uh, plow cycle speed, we only need about half that flow, or 15 gallons a minute. So it's possible for this cylinder to move fast enough to cause this float link to move away from the stop and basically in a float mode uh, before the wing drops uh, down. In this position, the wing is somewhat balanced, and if we, if we suck the wing in farther to the machine by taking out some of the shims and the stops and allowing the wing to come in closer to the machine, the wing will be basically balanced. There's nothing uh, giving the wing an incentive to succumb to gravity and drop out until it gets out some distance from its pivot point. <clears throat> so with fast hydraulics, this rod can shoot out, move the float link off the stop, and the wing will basically be in float while it's up in the air. Well, when that happens, eventually the wing's gonna come out and fall down, use up its available float travel until this float link hits the stop. And what that results in sometime is uh, in a uh, sudden drop of six to eight inches and uh, this float link slams against the float box stop and it'll scare the operators. It's quite, a, quite an impact. Ken will demonstrate that if you give it a little bit of RPM to get some flow and uh, drop it out. You may have seen that when Ken first deployed it, the float link came up and created a gap of about an inch between the float link and the float box stop. And that's what caused that sudden jerking that uh, sometimes alarms uh, new operators. Uh, it's basically harmless, but the way to avoid that is to feather the wing out. Just give it a little bit of uh, slack and... There you go. See, if you let it out gently, the cylinder doesn't run away from... or cause the float wing to run away from the float box, and there's no jerking and no uh, panic on the operator's part. When operating the wing, it's always a good idea to deploy the outboard portion of the wing first and let it down gently so it doesn't get that big uh, jerk. Uh, allow the float link to be in contact with this uh, stop, forward stop all the time. But you want to deploy the outboard portion first because if you deploy or let the slide down first, you'll have a tendency for this cutting edge point to dig into the pavement. And when that happens, uh, just the force of the, uh, the road hitting the cutting edge will cause the wing to kick up violently. So to help alleviate that, we always trim the corner of the cutting edge here. Uh, we chamfer it, cut it at a diagonal uh, for that to not catch or dig into the road. So whenever you replace cutting edges uh, on your wing, always make sure you trim this, uh, this leading corner to prevent that because somebody invariably will let this post down first. But properly done, uh, the outboard portion comes down first and then the toe or the slide portion comes down and prevents this uh, leading edge from digging in, tearing up concrete and perhaps causing the wing to flip up. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. Hope it was informative. Any questions, uh, call Hinky Tech Services or your salesman at Hinky and Leavenworth. Thanks.